Okay, so the title of this video is You Might Not Be Saved. So what I'm going to do is go over, go over a list of different things. And if you believe any of these things, you're not saved. Um, really that simple. I'll say that boldly. Um, so the first thing is, if you believe that works are required for salvation, you are not saved. Do you think they're required before salvation, after salvation, during salvation? You're not saved. Um, so, for example, if you think that you need to turn from your sins to be saved or stay saved, you're not saved because that's works. God calls it works in Jonah 3.10. It says, And God saw their works, that they turned from their evil way, and God repented of the evil that he said he would do unto them, and he did it not. So number one, God calls turning from your evil way works. Number two, God repents. A lot of people have a false teaching where, where they say that repent means to turn from your sin or to feel sorry for your sin. Well, God repents more than anybody in the Bible. And that verse I just showed you has nothing to do with sin. Uh, with God, obviously, because God can't sin. All God did was turn from his wrath. He changed his mind about pouring his wrath out uh, on Nineveh. And people will say, oh, see, yeah, look they were saved. Okay. Number one, that's talking about physical deliverance. Okay. Cause God was going to wipe out Nineveh with his wrath. And think about this in Nineveh. I guarantee you there were people that were saved that would have gone to heaven if God wiped them out and killed them. And there were people that were unsaved that if they died, they would go to hell. Just like if God poured his wrath out on America, there would be people that uh, were saved and people unsaved. So there would be people that, obviously everybody's going to physically die, but there's people that are going to go to hell and people that are going to go to heaven if God were to pour his wrath out on the United States of America. But people will twist things in the Bible and literally just make everything about heaven and hell. It's crazy. And you know, for salvation, uh, repent and believe the gospel just means to change your mind about what you believe, what you're trusting in, uh, to save you, to get you into heaven. You know, if you believe in uh, Islam, if you believe in Buddhism or one of these other false religions, you need to turn from that and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Put all your trust in him instead of these false religions, which just teach you actually to trust in yourself, to trust in your own good works. Um, so obviously sin also is the transgression of law, uh, transgression of the law. That's what first John says. Sin is the transgression of the law. So if you tell somebody that you need to turn from your sins to be saved, you're just saying that you need to keep the law to be saved. But the Bible says in Romans 3 20, therefore by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight for by the law is the knowledge of sin. So nobody's justified the law by the law because you can't keep it perfectly because you've sinned. The law is there to show us that we have sinned and that we're all guilty before God and that we need a savior. The law is there to bring us to Christ, if that makes sense. And everybody who's not saved is currently under the law and the wrath of God is upon them until they do get saved. Um, if you think that you need to do good things to be saved or stay saved, you're not saved because that's works. The Bible says in Ephesians 2.8 uh, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Romans 4.5 says, But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. So it's literally saying a person that believes but doesn't do any works is saved. Their faith is counted for righteousness. And people will say this all the time, all oh, faith without works is dead. Well, guess what? Um, a dead faith saves you. Because when you put your faith in Jesus Christ, do you have any works? Absolutely not. It's just faith. But here's the thing. Uh, if I have faith in Jesus, right, and for a month I just stop doing works, you know, I stop going out soul winning and stuff like that, am I not saved anymore? No, 
guess what? I'm just not profiting. I'm not being profitable to anyone else. If I'm not going to church, if I'm not preaching the gospel to anybody, I'm not profitable. My faith is dead and it's not helping anybody else out. And that's what that passage in James chapter 2 is even talking about. In the first place, he's talking to the saved. That's why he keeps saying, my brethren. I don't want to get too far into that. But James is written to the saved and he's just telling, hey, get to work, guys. And that's also talking about being justified before man, not before God. Uh, so obviously, because man sees our works, but um, they can't see our faith because faith is invisible. It's unseen. So we're justified before man by our works and before God, it's, it's by faith alone. That's it. Um, you know, Titus 3, 5 says, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. Very simple. Um, if you think you have to keep the commandments to be saved, you're not saved. Because keeping the commandments would be just keeping the law to be saved. That's a works-based salvation once again. And if you think salvation is earned, you're not saved. Romans 4.4 uh, 4 says, To him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace but of debt. So guess what? You're going to work yourself all the way into hell if you're trying to do that. And you know, the Bible actually makes it really clear where the people are going that trusted in their works, but even professed Jesus. Uh, Matthew 7, 21 through 23 says, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of God, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. I'll get to the will of the Father in a second. Verse 22 says, uh, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Have we not cast out devils in thy name? And have we not done many wonderful works in thy name? So what are these people trusting in to get them into heaven? Their works. They literally just said it. Haven't we done many wonderful works? They didn't say, oh, Jesus, we believed in you. We had our faith in you. You died for us. No, no, no. They just said, Lord, Lord, haven't we done many wonderful works? And the next verse, Jesus says, Then I will profess unto them, Depart from me. I never knew you, you that work iniquity. So Jesus said he never knew them. He, he didn't used to know them. He never knew them. They were never saved because they trusted their own works. Um, but people will read that verse and say, Oh, this is the scariest verse in the Bible. No, no, no. See, these charismatic people will say that's scary and these people that are trusting in their works because those people are trusting in their works the verse is about them that's why it's scary to them that's not scary that verse gives me assurance and it should give you assurance as well that salvation is by faith in jesus and it's only what he did because those people guess what if salvation was by works then guess what those people did the works they listed off all their works but guess what they went to hell they weren't saved um <clears throat> the next thing I want to mention is that if you think salvation is maintained, you're not saved because that's just you trying to save yourself or keep yourself saved. That's not Jesus saving you. Uh, the next one is uh, if you think you can lose your salvation or forfeit your salvation, you know, a lot of these people, they used to say that you can lose your salvation, but now they're more sneaky about it. They just say you can forfeit it. But it's the same thing because when you ask them, how do you forfeit it? They say by living a life of sin. Well, here's the thing. It, it, <laughs> did Jesus die for all your sins or not? Did he pay for everything in full or not? And these people will say, well, yeah, he died for all of our sins, but you can still lose it by sinning. Well, that doesn't make any sense. And, <clears throat> you know, uh, it, it's, it's incredibly clear that Jesus gives us everlasting life. It's not temporary life. It's not conditional life, okay? And it is a gift, all right? So it's given to you, and it's everlasting life. You know, John 5, 24, it says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but has been passed from death unto life. So you've been given an everlasting life when you believe on Jesus, and you shall not come into condemnation and you've been passed from death unto life. You, no. And people will say, well, if you don't keep the commandments and follow God's rules, you're not going to go to heaven. Well, here's the thing. I have kids. 
right? When my kid doesn't uh, obey my rules, are they just not my kid anymore? Absolutely not. See, the rules aren't there so that they can continue to be my kid if they follow them. The rules are there so that things can run smoothly and bad things don't happen. Because when we don't keep the commandments of God and do the things of God and try to you know, do things our way, bad things begin to happen. So they're, they're actually there for our own good so that we can live a good life. And you know what? God is pleased when we do that. And you know, if we do uh, go away from doing things God's way and you know, if we do live a sinful life, well, guess what? We're not gonna fulfill the purpose uh, that God actually had for us in this life and we're gonna miss out on rewards in heaven. Uh, but you're not going to lose your salvation. You can't go to hell no matter what once you believe on Jesus Christ. You have everlasting life. God didn't say I give you temporary life. And Jesus says in John 10, 28, uh, I give unto them eternal life. They shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. And they're also in the Father's hand, which is greater than I. So Jesus made it abundantly clear that you can't lose your salvation. Did Jesus do it all? Did he die for all your sins? Is salvation a gift or is it earned? It can't be both. You know, Romans eleven six says, and if by grace, then it is no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then it is no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. So what the Bible is saying is that salvation cannot be both grace and works. It's impossible. It has to be one or the other. Look, it's either works or it's grace. And it's clearly grace. You're not saved by works. Nobody was ever saved by works. And, um, you know, these people are just sneaky with the whole stupid forfeit thing. It's, it's the same thing. Um, next thing I want to talk about is that uh, another heresy is that hell isn't eternal. So if you think hell doesn't last forever and you can get out you know, or you believe in purgatory, or you believe in annihilation, which is like a Seventh-day Adventist uh, thing, you're not saved because you don't even know what you're being saved from. You have to know what you are being saved from, which is everlasting torment, fire and brimstone, and damnation. You know, Mark <clears throat> chapter 9 um, <clears throat> is really, really clear on hell and Jesus, Jesus preaches on that. So let me just show you some scripture from Mark chapter 9 here, guys. Uh, starting in verse 43 of Mark chapter 9. And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life mimed than having two hands to go into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched. He says, it never shall be quenched. And, you know, there's people who say, well, see, Jesus really wants you to cut, you know, your hand off and stuff. No, no, no. Jesus is just trying to, show you how bad hell is. He's not saying to literally do that. So guys, please don't take that literally. Um, next verse says, where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. So these people don't get annihilated. They are going to be there forever. When it says the worm dieth not, it's just saying that they're going to be there forever. Their body is not going to die. That's what it's talking about. The worm is the body. So, uh, Really clear scripture right there. And if you keep reading, he just kind of repeats the same thing. So that's Mark chapter 9, starting in verse 43. And then one more I want to read from the book of Revelation. And, you know, there's people that will try to twist this and stuff. But uh, let's go right here. Verse uh, Revelation chapter 14, starting in verse 10, the Bible says, The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. So that's another thing. You know, people say that hell is just separation from God. Well, no, actually, these people are going to be tormented in the presence of the Lamb, which is Jesus. He's God. Uh, hello. <laughs> um, next verse. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. And they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. And, you know, it's really clear that those people have no rest. They're tormented day and night forever and ever. But, you know, people are going to say, well, that's just the people that took the mark of the beast. I mean, that's ridiculous because everybody who goes to hell uh, is going to 
eventually go into the lake of fire because hell, death and hell is cast into the lake of fire. And there, those people are tormented, it, tormented in the presence of Jesus Christ. So another really good verse that proves that hell lasts forever is Revelation chapter 20, verses 14 and 15. The Bible says, And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So if your name is not in the book of life, if it's blotted out when you die, guess where you're going? You're going to hell, then you're going to the lake of fire. I mean, the Bible's really clear on that. And uh, everybody's name starts out in the book of life because everybody has the same chance to be saved. But here's the thing. When you die without believing in Jesus Christ, your name is blotted out of the book of life. And guess where you go? You go to hell. Unfor it's unfortunate. That's why, you know, you just got to accept the free gift. And what keeps people from being saved is just pride because they want to trust in themselves. They'd rather trust their own good works or, you know, believe in foolish things like evolution and all this nonsense instead. And they're college professors. No. But yeah, pride is the number one thing that keeps a person from getting saved. Uh, because it, it takes humility to be like, hey, I am a sinner. I deserve to go to hell and I can't save myself. I need to trust in Jesus Christ. So instead of trusting yourself, you have to trust Jesus. That takes humility. And guess who are some of the hardest people to get saved? Rich people. Because guess what? They're not humble. They trust themselves. <laughs> the next point I want to say is that if you believe that works are evidence of salvation, you're not saved. Because works don't get you saved. So how could works be evidence that you are saved? Okay? That's just you trusting yourself. If you think the assurance of salvation is the way that you're living your life, then hey, buddy, you're trusting in yourself. You're not trusting what Jesus did. You're trusting in your own actions to get you into heaven. That is an evidence of salvation. Evidence of salvation is that you believe what the Bible says about salvation, how to be saved. And, you know, 1 John chapter 5, starting in verse 10, makes it really clear what you need to believe. It says, He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself, which is the Holy Ghost. Because when you believe in Jesus Christ, guess what? God gives you the Holy Spirit to live inside you. And it says, He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life. So you got to believe that it's given. You can't believe that eternal life is earned somehow. Uh, and this life is in his son. You have to also believe that the life is in his son, Jesus Christ. Uh, he that hath the son hath life, and he that hath not the son of God hath not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, and that you may believe on the name of the son of God. So, that's how you're saved, if you believe the record of God. So you have to believe that, uh, that life is in Jesus Christ, that it's eternal life, that it's given, it's not earned, and it's just believing in Jesus Christ. It's, it's really that simple. If you believe it's some other way, guess what? You're calling God a liar. If you believe that you can lose your salvation, you are calling God a liar because you're saying, hey, it's not really eternal life, it's temporary. You know, if you believe there's some sort of catch and you have to do all these other things other than what this says, you aren't saved. And you know, when the Bible says to believe on Jesus Christ, it's just saying to trust or depend on him. So stop depending on yourself to get yourself into heaven and depend on what Jesus did. That's it. It's really that easy. God made it so easy because he wants everybody to be saved because you know what? If I could go to heaven by living better than the next guy, then guess what? I could boast about it. I could say, look, I've lived a better life than you. I deserve to go to heaven because I am better than you. But that's not how it works. We, we've all sinned. We're all sinners. We all deserve to go to hell equally. And we all have the same uh, way of being saved, which is by believing in Jesus so that nobody can boast because God uh, gives you salvation and hey, you can take it or leave it. You don't 
save yourself. Uh, the next point I want to go over is if you, you know, have no love for God, if you look deep down into yourself and you have no love for God whatsoever, you don't desire to do the things of God at all, uh, you don't want to even hear about God or anything like that, I highly doubt you're saved. I really, really doubt you're saved. Now, I'm not saying go out and do all the works, and if you don't have the works, you're not saved or anything like that. I'm saying if you look into yourself and you, you just... You don't desire anything of God at all. You don't have, you have zero love for God. I highly doubt you're saved. And, you know, there's some bozo that's probably going to say, well, oh, so you're saying I have to do works? No, I never said that. I just said, if you just look deep down into yourself and you don't even desire to do the things of God at all, you don't even want to do what's right, then I highly doubt you're saved. But, uh, next point is, uh, if you don't believe the Bible, you're not saved. You can't reject God's word and say, oh yeah, I'm saved. I'm a Christian. That's ridiculous. This, the Bible, the Bible is God's word. So if you reject that, you're definitely not saved. You know, if you say there's errors in the Bible, you're not saved. So, you know, I've seen people say, well, there's errors in the book of James. No, there's not. You're just not saved. Because if there's errors in the book of James, if there's any errors in the Bible, uh, that, that can't be of God because God doesn't have errors. God is perfect. So there's that. And the last thing I want to say is if you deny the Trinity, you're not saved. The Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, three separate persons and one God. So the, the Father is not the Son, the Son is not the Father, and the Holy Ghost is not the Son, and He's not the Father. Really that simple. Kind of like if you have a shampoo, body wash, conditioner, three in one. Obviously, all those three are one. It, it's really that simple. Because here's the thing. If you believe in oneness or the Father is the Son and all this nonsense, then you believe in a different God. You, you believe in a different God. And there's so many. If, if, if you just read the book of John, the Trinity is all over. You can't escape it. And essentially, if you are denying the Trinity, you're saying that Jesus sent himself. He loved himself. He obeyed himself. He said, he said to the Father, not my will be done, but my will be done. And, you know, there's a point in the book of Revelation where um, <clears throat> the Father hands, I believe the Father hands uh, the Lamb, which is Jesus Christ, a book. So you're just saying that Jesus handed himself the book? I mean, that's absurd. That's ridiculous. And those are just a few points. But, you know, a really, a really good verse that just makes it clear on the Trinity. Uh, it says, 1 John 5, 7, it says, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. And that's what we believe. That's what I believe. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. So these three, three separate persons, one God. It's really that simple, guys. So guys, I hope this video is really helpful towards you. And I just want to make sure that you know that you're saved and that you have eternal life before exiting this video. You know, the Bible says in Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So we've all sinned. Even the Bible says just the thought of foolishness is sin. And knowing to do good and doing it not is sin. We've all sinned and we sin every single day. And the Bible says in Romans 6, 23, the wages of sin is death. So the punishment that we have earned for our sin is to go to hell. And obviously, uh, God doesn't want a single person to go to hell. So he did something for us uh, in Romans 5, 8. It says, but God commendeth his love toward us while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So God the Father uh, sent His Son, Jesus Christ, into the world. He was born of a virgin. He lived a perfect life. He never sinned. He preached the Word of God. He did a lot of miracles. And, you know, eventually he was arrested by the Jews when he was betrayed by, by Judas Iscariot, gave him to the Jews, and then the Jews actually gave Jesus over to the Romans to crucify him. And, you know... When they crucified Jesus, uh, 
They put him up on the cross and he died on that cross for all of our sins. Every single sin, our past sins, our present sins, our future sins, every sin that you will ever commit, you know, sins like murder and suicide. A lot of people don't believe that those are forgivable, but guess what? Those are sins and Jesus died for every single sin. And when Jesus died, he was buried and his soul went to hell for three days and three nights. The Bible says in Acts 2.31 that his soul was not left in hell. Because guess what? The good news is that Jesus Christ, he rose from the dead on the third day. And the Bible says that there's one thing you must do to be saved. Saved from hell, which is everlasting torment, damnation, and punishment. And it's really bad. But... The Bible says there's one thing you must do to be saved. In Acts chapter 16, verses 30 and 31, the Philippian jailer says to Paul and Silas, he says, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. It's really that simple. He didn't say go to church and thou shalt be saved. Be a good person. Turn from your sins. uh, Live a good life. No, he said to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, which just means to trust or depend on. So stop trusting yourself. Stop trusting a false religion and trust Jesus with all your heart. And, you know, an analogy I like to give for this is, you know, if you are going to take an Uber somewhere, who are you trusting to get to your destination? You're trusting the Uber driver. You're not trusting yourself to get there. Just like with going to heaven, we are trusting Jesus to get there, not ourselves, not our actions, not our behavior, nothing that we do. We just have to put our faith and trust in Jesus to save us, and we're sealed. And, you know, the Bible says it's a gift. Uh, Ephesians 2, 8, 9, it says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So it's a free gift. God wants to give it to you, but all you have to do is take it by faith and accept that gift of salvation. And like I said, stop trusting yourself Um, because God doesn't want you to go to hell. He loves you that much that he sent Jesus to die for you. Uh, That's how bad God doesn't want you to go to hell. He doesn't want anybody to go to hell. And, you know, once, once you're saved, you have everlasting life. There's nothing you can do to lose it because it's everlasting life. Jesus says in John chapter 11, verse 26, it says, uh, he that... Uh, whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. So whosoever is alive and believes in Jesus will never die. And he's talking about spiritually, obviously, because everybody's going to die a physical death. Uh, John 10, 28 says, I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Uh, You know, John 647, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. You know, salvation's already a done deal. Jesus already paid for everything. He's just waiting for you to accept that gift and be saved. That's how much he loves you. Uh, One last thing I just want to say is that, uh, you know, if you just want to pray a quick prayer, uh, I can lead you in a quick prayer. And, um, Make sure, make sure that you obviously believe what I have said to you. Number one, admit you're a sinner. Uh, number two, uh, realize your need for a Savior. And you obviously have to uh, believe on Jesus Christ. Don't, don't trust anything else. And after that, guess what? You have that everlasting life and you have assurance of salvation because your assurance is in what Jesus did for you on the cross. And it's nothing else. Um, yeah, the Bible says that uh, Romans 10, 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Romans 10, 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So if you believe in your heart that uh, God raised Jesus Christ from the dead and Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that he paid for all your sins, and it's a done deal, Uh, I can just lead you in a quick prayer. Uh, Dear Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. I know that I deserve hell. I am no longer trusting in myself. 
Lord, I put my full trust in you. I believe that you are the Son of God and that you died on the cross for all of my sins and that you rose again the third day. Jesus, please save me and give me eternal life. Amen. Well, if you believe that, you're saved. And the Bible says the moment that you believe in Jesus that you are saved. Uh, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13 and 14, the Bible says, In whom you also trusted, in whom also after that, you heard the word of truth and you believed and you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession. So the moment you believe the gospel of Jesus Christ, which is his death, burial and resurrection, uh, you're sealed with the Holy Spirit. God gives you his spirit because he's serious about it. And there's nothing you can do to lose that. Ephesians chapter four, verse 30 says, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. So you're sealed. That's it. God sealed you. And, you know, you can grieve the Holy Spirit by disobeying God and, you know, living life uh, contrary to the way God wants you to live it. But guess what? You're sealed. And, um, you know, just like our parents would discipline us when we don't obey their rules. God does the same thing for his children uh, when we don't obey him. He disciplines us. The Bible calls it chastisement, but that's because he loves us and he wants us to learn. He wants us to grow in the faith and mature. It's all out of love. It's not because he doesn't like us and wants us to be miserable. And it, it, It's helping us uh, in our Christian walk, you know, uh, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 6 says, For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. So it's because he loves us and he wants to teach us to do the right thing. And hey, guess what? You, If you believe that, like I said, you have everlasting life and you should have a lot of joy in that. God bless you guys and thank you for watching the video.